Okay. So the project's title is Unraveling the Mysteries of the Plane of the Jars, and it's funded by the Australian Research Council. This project is a joint project, a cooperative project between the Lao Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism, the Australian National University and uh, Monash University. So we've had basically a really successful season identifying a whole range of uh, different kinds of mortuary practices and mortuary practices that haven't been identified previously here. So it's been very, very uh, robust in terms of uh, the, the data that we've, we've gathered. Today we're at site one, which is one of the larger sites with over 300 very large stone jars. So these things are um, quite impressive. Some are, you know, about two meters tall and you can't get your arms around them. We found um, a, a, what looks like now a primary burial with a very large limestone slab with a, a hole in it uh, and the skull positioned basically looking out of the hole. Whether that was the original positioning, you know, you've got various kinds of turbation so it's uh, possible that it wasn't originally like that but that's how we found it. In Unit 2, um, we selected that because there was another interesting disc-shaped object on the ground, and it was a disc that had a knob on it, and actually had knobs on both sides. So we excavated there, and lo and behold, we found um, a number of jar burials, and also another burial that was apparently not marked except for in the pit. They'd placed a limestone block on top of the human bones. So the jars also, they're clay jars, also com uh, contain human remains. They're yet to be excavated um, out of the jars, but that will be in the future. Madeleine Colani of the uh, Col Francais d'Extrême Orient worked here in the 30s and did excavate around many of the jars. Colani's idea was more that this was, the jars were not necessarily used for interment. Julie Vandenberg also is of the opinion that they perhaps were used to rot the flesh from the bones and then the bones were extracted and secondary burial was used around the jars. And of course there's also local legends about these being drinking cups for giants or um, in, you know former Lao kings using them to make uh, the local liquor Lao Kao. The bombing of Laos uh, in the 1970s is a, a massive tragedy. It's hard to even comprehend the scale of the, of the destruction that was wrought here. And unfortunately, some of the targets like this site, Site 1, was um, you know, heavily impacted by bombing. So there's, uh, there was cluster bombs uh, and, and uh, very large uh, 200 and 500 pound bombs dropped on this site. And of course, the, there's clear impact here. You can still see the bomb craters in the ground, and many of the jars have been uh, blown over and smashed in half by the bombing. But fortunately, the majority of the jars were not uh, destroyed, but there's massive damage here. There's no doubt about it. We did all the GIS mapping, so we've got a point for every jar, every disc, so they're all clearly more tree markers of some type and we've got all the drone footage that's what we've just been doing in the K2 facility at Monash the last week that's a big sort of interactive 3D stage with TV monitors all the way around and actually walk through the landscape and do virtual sort of reality archaeology it's really cool it'll play a big part in our future research we're lucky in that there are lots of teeth. Um, not, the bone is in very, very poor uh, condition. It's very uh, fragile. But the teeth are, are useful. My colleague, Dr. Louise Schuen, is going to be uh, doing the isotopic analysis. So we'll, we'll be collect, collecting grass and soil samples from 
around this region and then comparing the isotopic signature in those to that in the teeth of these people, which will indicate to us whether they were local people. Okay, so I'll be looking at strontium isotope in the human teeth. And so potentially from the teeth, you can, if someone's been uh, obtaining their food from the local area, they'll have the isotope signature of that same area. The teeth are fantastic because the preservation's very good and teeth aren't porous like bone. The potential for contaminants from the burial environment is very small. The plan is to next year come back and uh, our target site will be site 52 which is a high elevation site um, and the morphology of the, the stone jars is a little bit different. Um, so different uh, geographically and different morphologically so it should be interesting to have a comparative data set between site 1 and site 52. And hopefully our research will contribute to Lao being able to uh, have these listed as World Heritage. So we're really hoping to contribute something to help Laos and help tourism in Laos to bring these to wider attention around the world. Next year, right, of next course, year. we will continue. Yes, of course. Yeah. Right. Now back to work! Oh, yeah. <laughs> the rope!